When Mitch Pilzer moved to Tsipori in 1997, he knew the plush, idyllic surroundings of the agricultural Moshav, steeped in centuries of Jewish history, would be a hit with tourists. But not everyone agreed. When we said we were going to build bungalows, I said, who would come over here? Because you know, it, was, it was, at the time, an agricultural Moshav full of cows and sheep and people growing tomatoes. But Pilzer was right. He opened his bed and breakfast, Sipori Village County Cottages in 2000, and it's been a huge success. With upscale but homey private bungalows, tourists can enjoy beautiful views of the valley, wander among the historic pomegranate orchards, or cool off in the pool. Sipor means bird in Hebrew, and it's believed that maybe the town was named Sipori because it's perched on a hill like a bird with an unbelievable view. But there is also history in Sipori. In ancient times, Sipori was one of the most important spiritual centers for Jews. In the Talmud and the Mishnah, after Jerusalem, no place is mentioned more times than Sephirst, Sipori in Hebrew. World-renowned archaeologists Eric and Carol Myers were among the first to excavate the site of Sipori back in the 1980s when the first signs of an ancient city were discovered. A group of their graduate students are digging in this section where it's believed an affluent Jewish neighborhood once stood in the first century. But it was the defeat of the great Jewish revolt against the Romans in the year 70 that brought a major influx of Jews to the city. It was the only major Jewish population center to sit out the war and in recognition for their cooperative pacific attitude, uh, the Emperor Nero allowed their citizens here to mint coins labeled Irinopolis, City of Peace, Ir Shel Shalom. But it would soon turn into a city of learning. The destruction of the Second Temple in Jerusalem led rabbis to establish religious schools and synagogues in Sipori. One of Jewish history's most important religious figures has now made Sipori famous forever. Rabbinical Judaism was born in Sipori. When Rabbi Judah Anasi came here in the beginning of the third century, he put together the Mishnah right here in Sipori. I'm sure not more than 100 meters from where we're sitting. And the Mishnah is the basis of rabbinical Jewish life to this day. Mitch took me inside what archaeologists believe was likely the city's town hall. It houses some of the most well-preserved and intricate mosaics in all of Israel. The wonders of the Nile River are depicted in this now famous floor. Mythical creatures and decorative designs abound. None of us expected that there would be, not only that there would be mosaics, but there would be mosaics of such a high quality and all different kinds of buildings, synagogue mosaics, villas, baths, uh, you name it. There's mosaics in virtually every part of the site. It's really quite phenomenal. This mosaic of a beautiful woman called the Mona Lisa of the Galilee was uncovered in a villa next to the Jewish quarter. The layers of ruins uncovered all over the city show how deep Jewish history runs in Sipori. It's a link in the chain from ancient Israel to modern Israel. It's a real honor to be able to continue what Jews were doing here thousands of years ago to do it today, and I'm hoping I'm raising my children, you know, who will also stay here and do the same thing. Discovering the past or dipping into the pleasures of today, either way, visitors are sure to be enchanted by Tsipori. Jordana Miller, Israel Up Close.